So thank God for everyone's willingness to share your gifts and talents as we continue to make music to our Lord and Savior. And with that, let us hear our first piece of music this morning and uh, prepare our hearts with a prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we know, today is Music Sunday. And I just wanted to ask the question, why do we think that music is so important? And I'm going to answer that question with four brief quotations from a number of musicians, famous musicians. Uh, and uh, the first one is by Gustav Holst, who's best known for writing The Planets. Music being identical with heaven isn't a thing of momentary thrills or even hourly ones. It's a condition of eternity. The second is by a jazz drummer known called Billy Higgins. The first thing is jazz is one of the few things to let you know that there is a God and that there is a creation. And the third one is by Kurt Vonnegut, who was a science fiction writer. Uh, if I should ever die, God forbid, let this be my epitaph. The only proof he needed for the existence of God was music. And finally, Johann Sebastian Bach. The final aim and reason of all music is nothing other than the glorification of God and the refreshment of the spirit. So now let's hear our first anthem.
which is when I hear music as performed by the Sanctuary Choir. Please join me in the unison prayer. Gracious God, source of joy and righteousness, enable us as redeemed and forgiven children evermore to rejoice in singing your praises. Grant that what we sing with our lips and what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our lives. So that being doers of the word and not hearers only, we may receive everlasting life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The combined choirs will now rise up, O children of God. The scripture this morning is James 5 verses 13 through 16. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteousness is powerful and effective. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everybody. Um, children, if you're there, you know, please gather in. I saw a few of you this morning, so that's wonderful. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about one of the best things that I feel in my faith, and then one of the most problematic things that I have with my faith. And so I'm going to start with the best, right? We just heard um, Mr. Kaiser read about sort of how James was talking about the power of prayer and how the power of prayer is um, very effective and powerful, right? So I believe that. We also talked about when, um, when you're feeling joy, you should sing those songs of praise. And when you're feeling sad, you should gather and pray, right? That sounds great, doesn't it? And I think on Music Sunday, 
I'm not just speaking for myself, that I say that singing songs and hearing beautiful music touches me in a way that makes me feel God with me, right? And that is truly wonderful. It's the same when we experience beauty in our lives, you know, that there's beauty and love and kindness and joy connect us with God when we feel that. So that's the best, right? So what do I have a problem with in terms of the worst, right? And it's really the prayers for healing, right? There are different versions of this Bible verse, um, different translations of what James said. And some of them say, basically, get together the righteous and the powerful, pray, and the sick people are going to be well, right? Not God will heal us, God will bring comfort to us. But the sick person's going to get well, right? And I think we all know in our lives and we've all experienced in our lives that sometimes we can pray and our power, you know, the power of our prayers, uh, we're righteous and we care and we love and we pray and we do that as a church together. And yet the person that we're praying for is not healed. So what does that mean, right? And I wish I knew the answer to that, because if we all knew the answer to that, I suspect a lot more people would have a stronger faith in God. Um, but yet, it's a challenge to figure out why God calls us to pray and says, pray, pray for the sick, pray that they may be healed. And yet, sometimes those prayers are not answered in the way that we would hope. Right? So. Figure in on that, right? What does it mean? We prayed, we prayed, we prayed, and our loved one was not healed. And we had to accept that loss. And I know that God helps us accept the loss. I know that God comforts us in the loss. But why did those prayers not heal, right? So I don't have an answer for that, right? I can say, well, maybe James, you know, maybe we got the translation wrong, right? What God was promising is that we would have comfort and that our loved one would not suffer more. Or, you know, maybe we just misunderstood what God was telling through James. Right? So what do we do when we misunderstand, right? And I'm gonna say something that I hope everybody, every adult in your life tells you. When we don't understand something that God said, what should we do? We should question God, right? And I don't mean that that means we should say, God, we don't believe in you. God, we reject you. God, we don't, you know, I don't mean that kind of question. I mean, we should ask God questions and we should listen for answers. And those answers might not come fast, right? But if you have a question, I am absolutely certain that God can handle your question, right? And that there is no question that you can ask of God that God is not prepared to answer, right? It might be hard to listen and find those answers. And I know many, many adults who are on this call right now who are still listening to questions, to the answers to questions that they've asked, right? But when I was a kid, I was told you couldn't question God. And that was so wrong, right? And I think that it's a way of saying, well, if we don't understand, it's because God works in ways that we don't understand. All right. That's probably true. I, I feel that that is very true, right? But it's not true that God doesn't want you to question. God wants you to understand. God wants you to be close to him. And when you have questions, God wants you to bring those questions to God, right? So feel the music, feel the joy, celebrate with God, feel that spirit in your lives, rejoice in it. And when something doesn't quite fit, ask God. I'm pretty sure God will be glad that you did and that you will be glad that you did. All right, let's bow our heads and say a prayer. Right. Dear God, 
thank you for the wonderful brains that you've given us. Thank you for the voices that you've given us. Thank you for our hearts that resonate when we feel joy. And thank you for the part in us that says, wait a minute, I didn't quite understand that. Let's look at that again. And thank you for your patience with us as we try to understand and your encouragement to us that we can grow as people of faith if we ask questions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we continue our theme of prayer, uh, the gospel choir is standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not a brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not a brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. standing in the need of prayer each and every day. So what are the prayers that are on your hearts this morning? What joys do you have to share? What concerns do you want lifted up before God? And let us come before God in prayer. Let us come before God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, each one of us stands in the need of prayer. We need prayers celebrating um, our accomplishments and prayers celebrating our joys. We need prayers which lift up our hurts and our pains. We need prayers which build a relationship with you. We need prayers which are silent so that we might listen. We need prayers of forgiveness so that we might hear your mercy. We need prayers that lift up questions so that our faith might grow and that our relationship with you might be strengthened. Oh God, we all stand in the need of prayer and we come this day as a community of faith to lift up our prayers. First, we come to give thanks and to celebrate. We thank you for this community of faith. We thank you for opportunities to be together, to celebrate, to worship, to share together. We thank you for 
this act of worship and the gift of music and the gift of our choirs and all who participate in our music program. We give you thanks for those who listen and experience the music in this place. We give thanks for fellowship that this community shares and we thank you for the time we were able to have yesterday with Felicia and Jesse and with one another. We ask your continued blessing on Felicia and Jesse and let their love and their relationship for one another continue to grow. We give thanks for this fellowship that reaches out into the community and around the world to change lives here in Gaithersburg and in Mongolia and in Sierra Leone and wherever the United Methodist Church touches the people of your world. God, we come this day thanking you for your love and for your grace and for the power in our lives that allows us to be the people you call us to be. Continue to work within us and transform our hearts and our lives so that we might serve and so that we might grow and so that we might be Christ-like. We come to you today to continue our celebrations. We thank you um, for Jackie and for the birthday that she will celebrate this week. We pray you would continue to be with her, keep her healthy and whole, and uh, guide her in her life. We give thanks for, um, for Marche and Jerome and the fact that they're able to return to their home this week or in the coming days. We know it's been a difficult year for them, but gracious God, they have been held up by their faith. They have been held up by this community. They have been held up by their own, uh, by their perseverance. They've been held up by you. So as they enter into their rebuilt home, bless them and may that place be a place of safety a place of peace a place of wholeness we give you thanks for all who are able to join with us today whether uh, that be in arkansas or montana or sierra leone or across the street from the church building wherever we are gathered, O oh God, or from wherever we are gathered, we give thanks. And we pray that you would continue to hold us together as a community of faith. We do lift up our concerns before you as well. We pray for, um, we pray for Kristen and, and Rosanna as they travel, and we pray for the Millers and the Chambers as they travel. Bless them in their travels, keep them safe, and gracious God, um, hold them close to you. Let them, uh, let them get to their destinations, enjoy themselves while they are there, and return to uh, homes if that, is, if that is the way it goes, if that's where they're going. Um, loving God, we do also lift up to you all of those who are in need of healing today. For Abda, um, ease the pain that she is feeling, and gracious God, um, hold her close. For all of those who are suffering around the world, um, whether it be from lack of basic necessities, or from health issues, or from injustices, be with them, strengthen them, Send your disciples to help. And gracious God, as we offer these prayers, we pray in faith. And we pray that you will answer those prayers, that you are hearing these prayers, and that you will answer those prayers. But we know, oh God, when there are times where prayers seem to be unanswered, that's when that's when we must question and we must ask, but we also must continue to step forward in faith to seek those answers and to continue to lift up those persons and those circumstances and those issues before you. 
hold them up as individuals and as a community. Help us to continue walking in faith and offering our prayers for all who stand in the need of prayer. And now, oh God, hear the prayers of your people, and I invite you to lift your prayers privately and silently before God, those that you dare not speak out loud this morning. Spend a moment and offer them to God. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. We lift up all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The men will be leaning on everlasting arms. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting This day, we give thanks for those who have sent their offerings to the church. We give thanks for those who have sent their offerings through the web portal. We offer thanks. May we each continue to offer our gifts for the continuing work of Jesus in the world. Will you pray with me this day? Exalted one. We joyfully celebrate our unlimited trust in your faithful promises. We pray that all people will someday sound a cacophony of hallelujahs as they truly accept your steadfast love. May these gifts that we gladly lay upon your altar enable ministries that support this chorus of praise. We pray with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Be known 
Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus around the throne, and thus around the throne. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King, may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. The hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets. Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, or walk the golden streets, or walk the golden streets. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. Marching through Emmanuel's ground, we're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. And now as this service ends, we go forth from wherever we are. We break apart as a worshiping body, but we go with a song in our hearts. So listen for the song that God is singing to you. It is a song of love. Listen for the song that others are singing as praise to God and join your voice and you're hand clapping and you're dancing with them. For together we praise, together we pray, together we dance, together we serve. Go forth in the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.